All right. So I still see your um, your mug frozen with Notre Dame in the background. <laughs> okay. It's uh. I should be coming back on here soon. Okay. All right. There we go. We're back. Let me see where we're at here. So I'm pulling this up. We are live out here. So, guys, Ernest is coming at us from Paris. And what's that in the background? Bonjour. That is the Notre Dame Cathedral. Notre Dame Cathedral. And tell us a little bit about the Notre Dame Cathedral there. Did you take a walk through that thing? I mean, like, can you walk in it? Is uh, it honestly, like, I, I went around it, and it's, like, all pretty much gated off. So I wasn't actually able to go through. There might be, like, some secret entrance I'm not aware of. <laughs> so I, I will be trying to discover that after the call. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but I was hanging out at the Eiffel Tower not too long ago. That was pretty awesome. Uh, that thing is absolutely an, an amazing piece of architect. I was just looking at, like, the way it was engineered and the design. I'm just like, man, that took a lot of just, like, just thinking about the person that had to think about putting that together is just astronomical like it's an amazing piece of architect and that's the biggest thing like uh, I, I love being here is just like every single building and every single thing that's built here in Paris just like it just it, it feels like it's just built with love like there's so much detail and so much like effort put into every single piece of architect even like the the apartment uh that I have with the Airbnb is just like you know everything is just built so well So you're over there in Paris. So how long are you gonna be there for? Uh, I'm gonna be here until tomorrow. So I flew in on Saturday. So I think that puts me at what, like four days, five days, mm -hmm. yeah, like four days, three nights, or five days, three, four nights, something like that. <laughs> and then I'm actually flying to Barcelona tomorrow. So that is gonna be awesome. I was gonna take a train. Like there's a train that goes directly from Paris to Barcelona. And uh, me and my buddies, we thought it was going to be just a few hours, like four or five hours and the train ride is actually 15 hours so we all got shell shocked when we discovered that and we all bought flights immediately <laughs> we're like oh 15 hours on the train like it's a two-hour flight with 15 hours on the train that's not cool so yeah we had to uh, pivot a little bit <laughs> it's nice to be able to call all of us like that you pulled a peyton manning huh yeah, yeah, we had, <laughs> yeah, we had to pull an audible, man. It was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know. But that—that's the life of a digital nomad. Sometimes, you know, you can just call audibles and kind of hop around a little bit. <laughs> so, tell, tell us a little about why why you went to to Paris. I know it wasn't to see all the sites, um, but you get a chance to do that. And uh, share us a little bit about where you were like a year and a half ago. Because you know, that's what most people don't see. I mean, most people see the results from, you know, the, the labor that you put in. But you've been birthing this baby for a long time. Oh, yeah. No, I was, uh, I've, been, I've been putting in work for quite some time, you know. Uh, so really a, a year and a half ago, um, I was still working a full-time job. Um, I was actually, at the time, I was working as a sales manager um, on a, a project. I was overseeing an area for Cox Cable in uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, helping them with their outside sales teams. And uh, I was transitioning from that to work as a human resources a human resource manager uh, for another company because I just didn't like the way uh, Cox was handling, like, the back-end process. Like, I was getting really frustrated with the customers that we were helping them acquire um, and then just having terrible customer service on the back end. Like, I was having people in their third and fourth month billing cycle uh, still getting overbilled. And it was frustrating because I, I really care about people. And, like, when I put my word out there on something and I do everything I'm supposed to do and then there's other things I can't control, which, you know, should be handled, especially something like a billing issue, um, you know, stuff like that wasn't getting rectified. So I was transitioning to another company and I uh, was working there. And I just kind of – I got the bug a little bit, um, you know, for trying to figure out how, to, how the things work, like, in an online, you know – you know, literally since like 2009 with no success up until, you know, this last two years where I really decided to actually take it serious um, because uh, I just had a lot of things going on in life and just wanted to be able to, 
you know, really provide for my family at the at, at a proper level that I wasn't doing up until that point. And, you know, I just looked at the internet and, you know, e-commerce as a way to be able to create some opportunity. So I said, uh, enough is enough. I need to figure this stuff out and decided to, you know, really commit and take it serious. And I was able to uh, create some pretty good success pretty quickly. When you say, um, you know, pretty good success pretty quickly, you know, you explain, I mean, you were, you were working, you know, chasing the entrepreneur dream for, for how many years now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, since pretty much like 2008, 2009 time frame, you know, I've, so pretty much like a decade, I've been trying to figure out the whole on, well, not necessarily online, but just entrepreneurship in general, um, and just kind of failing miserably. I was pretty much chasing the corporate America dream. Um, you know, so I was kind of like one foot in, like with entrepreneurship, one foot out, because I was trying to be like this super awesome corporate person, uh, you know, working as a marketing director and sales manager for a couple of different companies. Um, and so it was just like, you know, a little wishy-washy on the back end of what I was doing from an entrepreneur perspective, but you know, life has a way of, uh, you know, making you draw a crossroad and, you know, really determine like whether or not you want to be serious or not. <laughs> and your crossroad left you where at that point? I mean, you were, you were working as, was it caught you were, you started out, you know, in your career, were you about 18, 19 or you going door to door, banging on doors being the Cox communicator guy, I mean, like. Yeah, yeah, I started, uh, so that's essentially, like, I was going to Liberty University um, as a freshman in college, and then, you know, my mom, she she was having some challenges with the bills and stuff at home because my dad left my sophomore year, um, and so, you know, they kind of separated, and so she was left to just kind of provide for me, my older sister, and my younger sister. My older sister, she was pursuing a law lower, uh, lower degree career, um, to become an attorney, which she's actually achieved. So that's awesome. Um, and, but I just kind of seen her struggling. So my sophomore year, I decided to uh, quit school. And that's when a friend of mine was actually working at a door-to-door -door company. And uh, she told me she was making $10 an hour, like passing out flyers, knocking on doors. And so I was just like, man, that is really awesome. Uh, you know, $10 an hour. I wasn't necessarily excited about the door-to-door -door aspect. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. But, you know, I was more I was more focused on the 10 bucks an hour. And I was like, yeah, I'll go knock on doors and pass out flyers for, for $10 an hour. And then uh, what happened was as, as I was kind of working, I think it was like probably like my second or third week, uh, I found out that you could get a thing called a commission. And I had never heard of that before. Like, like, what is a commission? Like, I'm only used to, you know, people, you know, working and then trading time for money pretty much. Like, you work X amount of hours, you get paid X amount of money. And so when I learned that you could get a commission – uh, if any of the leads that you generated for the company actually purchased something, I got fired up and excited. And so I really focused on learning how to uh, pretty much, you know, get people to uh, have a desire and want to actually purchase uh, different products and stuff for their home when I was working for the remodeling company. And I became a marketing director for the company. I wound up opening up an office for them. And this was in like my early 20s. I was like 20, 21. Um, and pretty much like, you know, I started just kind of chasing the corporate route. But, you know, I knew that I wanted to do something. I just kind of didn't know what. And so as far as from an entrepreneurship perspective, um, you know, I tried doing uh, affiliate marketing. I tried doing um, building my own remodeling company uh, with some family. That didn't work out. I did uh, network marketing. It was just like I was just poking at all these different things and just was just trying to find my swag. <laughs> so. As you were you're finding your swag, you went through this, you had your trials, tribulations, and ultimately you settled on what you're doing now. And how has what you're doing now changed everything from you? So that was a year and a half, you know, last June that I met you. Uh, forward, fast forward now, we're, we're just out of July um, into August 1st right now. And you're now launched your, your business on Shopify. Um, I know you're killing it. You're, you know, you're meeting with completely different type of people. Uh, that you were a year and a half ago. Like, what what was the big change for you that you that one thing you figured out that everybody wants to know? How do I how do I get a chance to get to Paris? How do I get a chance to live the life I always wanted to walk away from my corporate job? And you were serving what was called a seven year cubicle sentence, you know, already uh, in corporate America. And there's a lot of people out there that want to be you know living the lifestyle. You're at that freedom lifestyle right now. Um, how did you do it, man? 
Man, I really, you know, it, pretty much the, the thing for me was that, you know, there's a lot of people out here talking about, you know, making money on the Internet, building e-commerce stores and things of that nature. But nobody's really helping people actually make money, make results. And the thing for me, like the one thing I learned how to do was like to actually get people to convert on my site. Like if I had to like narrow down just the one thing, it's like I learned how to build a website that sells. Like every, every store that I launch is built to sell. Like it's not built just to generate traffic. It's not built just to be another placeholder in, in for advertising. Every single store I build is built to sell. And, you know, that's the one thing I really focused on out of all the other stuff that I was learning on the Internet. It was like, OK, like, you know, picking a niche is cool. Getting suppliers is cool. But I need to learn how to actually make money. At the end of the day, if it don't make money, it don't make sense. So for me, you know, I, I really, you know, put my back against the wall to really learn how to make that happen. Because at, uh, like when I was working full time, I wound up um, losing all three of the vehicles that I actually owned at that point in time. I literally, it was like one thing after another, like literally all three vehicles just blew up and it was just like a traumatic experience because I was still working full time. Fiance was working full time. At the time I had just launched my online store. Um, and it was just like, man, I need to learn how to make this thing sell. And I need to learn how to make it sell fast. And, uh, you know, it just so happened that, you know, during that time period, I didn't quit on my store. Like I had done my other entrepreneurial ventures. I said, you know what? I'm going to learn how to figure this thing out. Like, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I give it the best effort that I possibly can, you know, even if it makes me bankrupt. <laughs> and so because I made that decision and drew that line in the sand, um, you know, it really forced me to, you know, get very creative about things that I can do on my store that will actually help me generate revenue. And so because I didn't quit in that process, I wound up actually – uh, getting like a large sale that gave me enough profit from that in order to drive the brand new Kia Soul that I'm, that I'm actually driving right now today. Like because I didn't quit on my on my business, my business actually provided for me uh, and my family because at the time, like when we were at the dealership and I and I had that order come through, uh, me and my fiance, we were sitting down, we were signing the deal, uh, signing the paperwork. And obviously we knew that that was just one good deal that we had. But, you know, she kind of, she looked over at me. Um, and the sales manager was just like, you know, you sure, are you guys sure you can afford the monthly pay? Like, are you sure? And she looked over at me and she, she just had this look like just, she looked, looked at me and was just like, you know, are you, are you positive? Like, can you actually do this? And it was just like a feeling of just, you know, just like, just not really being a man, just like, you know, just like, just this absolute, just like gut wrenching feeling. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to find a way to make this thing happen. Like come hell or high water, like this thing is going to happen. I'm going to crush this business and I'm going to figure out a way to win. And, uh, because of that, you know, I put my back against the wall and I just went to work. Like I didn't say anything to her. I didn't talk about nothing. I just flat out started grinding and grinding and grinding. And uh, within seven months of me actually launching my online business, I was able to uh, make enough money to replace my full time income. Um, and, you know, the, the rest is pretty much history. I'm able to pretty much manage uh, my entire business, like 90 percent of my business. I manage from my cell phone. Like actually just before this call, I was processing. The, I actually sent a, a purchase order over to my supplier because I literally just had a sale before this actually popped up. I was like, oh, I got a sale. Let me go and send this over before we hop on our live session. But, you know, you're able to do that when, you know, you learn how to, uh, you know, leverage the Internet and build a, uh, you know, drop shipping business or e-commerce business, um, you know, that, you know, provides value to the marketplace. And that's what it comes down to in the sales aspect. You know, that's one of the biggest nuggets that I've learned uh, with the selling place. Uh, so, that's yeah, man. <laughs> all in. Number one thing right there is just all in, burnt the boats. You know, you, you went after it and uh, resulted to where you're at today. So I'd like to say congratulations. First of all, Ernest, where's the best place for people to get a hold of you? I know you're, you're opening up some slots out there. To, you've been helping some people or their businesses in, in the uh, Shopify space. What's the best way for people to kind of reach out for you? So the best way to reach out to me, uh, you know, I'm actually working on uh, putting together a new uh, program and everything to help 
uh, accelerate people's success rates uh, with building their online businesses. Uh, so um, the domain is in the process and it works right now, but it's going to be built to sell dot us. So B U I L T two T O sell S E L L dot us. Cool. And if somebody wanted to reach out to you right now, is the best way to just reach out to you on Facebook? Yeah, just reach out to me on Facebook. You know, the difference between me and all these other like people that have all these crazy income claims and all these crazy stories is like, um, you know, I'm a real deal person. You can reach out to me directly. You know, I'm not shy. You know, I'm here to, to help and serve people. I've, you know, had the privilege over the last uh, just a year to do over 1,100 coaching calls uh, worldwide, uh, helping and serving people get results. So once I've been able to, you know, achieve the success I've, I've gotten, I've actually been able to give back to multiple people across the world to help them uh, achieve success too as well. So yeah, reach out to me on Facebook. Um, you know, you can Google me. You'll see tons of content, uh, tons of podcasts and, and uh, radio shows and stuff I've been featured on. So yeah, just, uh, just contact me. I'm on Facebook and uh, you know, I'd love to hear about where you're at in your journey and, you know, see how we can uh, serve you best. And if there was one thing you could say to somebody out there who is facing, you know, that pivotal point of, Hey, I'm just thinking about giving up. What would you say to them? Man, just, uh, just, just really like focus on what, what, just focus on what you got started for. Like, why did you get started? You know, it's, it, you know, I've, I've heard, I've had a mentor tell me, you know, so many times over and over again, like success is a thought process. It's that, you know, life is going to happen. Things are going to happen, but it's not what happens to you. It's what happens in you. So whatever's happening to you, it's happening to you because it's helping you grow. It's helping you to get to the next level because, you know, when you're in the gym, you're lifting weights. Like, you don't, you don't grow muscle by, you know, lifting the same exact weight and doing the same routine exercise. You grow muscle by tearing that muscle down. And, and by tearing that down, it's going to rebuild and then it's going to allow you to grow and to expand and to be able to lift and get to a higher weight. So, you know, the same thing happens to us in life. Like circumstances, situations, they come up and, you know, it's going to challenge you. Like life is going to rock your world. It's going to punch you in the face. It's going to drag you through the mud. Uh, it's going to be very challenging. Like, you know, as, as much as I'd love to say every day is a good day, every month is a good month, you know, it's not. But, you know, I always learn to figure out a way to get through it. Um, so, you know, let that, let that circumstance and situation that you're going through, you know, really challenge you and say, Hey, like, you know, this is, this is happening to me because there's a next level that I need to get to. And this situation is going to help me grow. So then I can take that situation and turn it into a positive circumstance. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing Ernest. Best of luck with all the, the venture that you're working on. Enjoy Paris, man. Uh, looking forward to seeing the pictures on Instagram and, and Facebook and everything. I'll be a, you're an inspiration to everybody, inspiration to myself. And look forward to seeing pictures from Barcelona next, man. That's going to be cool. Absolutely. Yeah, we're hitting up Barcelona, then Rome, then London. Uh, so, yeah, we got a, we got a nice little international trip going on. <laughs> there you go, man. Enjoy the time with the uh, fellowship with the other entrepreneurs you're working with, man. Absolutely. All right, I'll see you. All right, guys. Later.